when I get a a statement like the virtual has become more real than the physical, um, I, what I want to do is take, take a really deep time perspective on this. Uh, our current situation is a blip in everything that is happening in our universe and, and an interesting blip. Um, but I think that for me, the question that was raised in the introduction about what what really is real. Um, and it's interesting, the physical for me is actually very transitory. Uh, a deep time perspective from physics uh, indicates that our future is actually rather bleak because particles will decay. Um, protons take a very long time to decay, but they will decay. Uh, black holes, uh, they leak and eventually will just go pop and disappear. Our future is actually one where the universe is incredibly boring and is just basically reduced to uh, photons and gravitons. Um, and so there will not be any physical other than this form of energy. And if one looks back in deep time uh, to the beginning, uh, where did all of this come from? Uh, well, you know, there was a moment when there was nothing and then there was something. Um, so this is a very transitory period that we're in. For me, if you're looking for the things that are real, you've got to look for the things which are outside of time. For me, the things which are outside of time are mathematics. But for me, the, the one thing that actually does not require creation, does not require physicality, is in some sense the, the per, uh, perfect example of the virtual, because it doesn't need the physical, are mathematical ideas. And so for me, I feel that what we're living in is a physicalized piece of mathematics. Um, we see again, time and again the physics uh, being reduced to extraordinary mathematical equations. Um, uh, so for, for me, the, the numbers that I'm wearing now, they are the reality. They are what builds us. And if we're actually coming back to our very specific time now and celebrating the virtual, what is the virtual? It is just a load of numbers of zeros and ones. At the moment, you're all experiencing us thanks to us being converted into uh, numbers and information, uh, which is the, a kind of new form of energy. So, so I would say the physical is certainly not the most interesting thing. For me, the fact that we can have a virtual world is the fact that we are all translated into number and number is the only thing which is real. You know, my recent work has been looking at the impact of artificial intelligence, uh, uh, an area which seems to be in science and its impact on creativity um, and, and the arts and the visual world and the music. Um, and I think we tend to cast this as a debate too much about uh, a sort of competition between the virtual and the real. Uh, I mean, I think this has been uh, brought up a few times by speakers and actually, uh, you know, it's, in some ways, my, my background is um, Hal from uh, 2001, and that seemed to be about, you know, Hollywood is very responsible for this kind of conflict between the two. Uh, and my feeling is that we need to change that um, debate and really talk about this as a, a collaboration. I, I, it was already mentioned about uh, these things being fantastic tools to help us as humans do to new do new things. And we have to remember that the AI that's being developed, the machine learning, um, it, it isn't some other species it is growing out of our data. It is learning about things that we can't see because of the, the challenge of scale of embodiment. Uh, and, and that, uh, so the, the recommendations, the directions it's taking us on are actually got its source in the human. And we tend to, to sort of talk about this as if it's some other species telling us what to do. No, it's a reflection actually of our world um, back to us in a new mirror and and we need to learn how to to collaborate with that tool what we need is an empathetic virtual world an empathetic ai um so that we can go forward in, in a positive way uh you know the question of uh, whether there is only just pure consciousness and what is consciousness um it seems to be one of the big open problems of science but one of the most interesting developments has been uh, in a sleep laboratory in madison uh, by giulio tononi who's been trying to understand the difference between us in deep stage four sleep and and awake 
Um, and it does seem to be very much about the connectivity, the nature of that connectivity. Almost he's produced a mathematical formula which will measure your level of consciousness. And, and this will be really interesting going forward because, you know, when will this thing actually become conscious? When will it suddenly say iPhone think, therefore iPhone am? And we'll have to recognize that it's uh, got an internal world, got rights we, we've got to give it. So uh, and, and the question of if that is information that makes us uh, our consciousness is that something that can be brought alive inside a, a machine i mean i think these are just absolutely fascinating questions that we're going to have to to wrestle with uh, um and this is a question that can only be answered by many subjects coming together with their different perspectives and not one will have uh, the answers and forward to a moment when somehow the the barriers come down between the subjects uh, and people don't at school or university say they're studying English, mathematics, music, um, that actually we realize that these are all, all, all essentially the same thing. Um, and uh, yeah, I think it's one of the, the joys of the Jaipur Literary Festival is that you bring people from so many different uh, disciplines together to, to, to share ideas. And, and this, this really is the way forward. I, I was asked actually by Wired magazine a few years ago to send back um, a postcard from the future about what I hoped the future would be like. And, and, and my, my wish was for um, an education system that, that didn't have these, the, these boundaries um, there.